Hey y'all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics Playlist and today we are approaching a really really interesting topic called spin. Now I introduced this topic to you um, when we were doing the quantum numbers lesson and we just kind of talked about um, electron spin in the quantum numbers and in that lesson I talked about how in, um, in each orbital an electron can take on only two states spin up and spin down. So in an energy orbital, so let's say um, at n equals 1, oops, that's a big line, at, at n equals 1, we have the 1s shell, and we said that electrons can take on a value of spin up or spin down, and only these two discrete values. Okay, so this spin down state would be represented as a negative half spin, and this spin up state would represent as a positive half spin. So what exactly is spin? Now this concept always um, uh, confuses a lot of people. So I decided to research into it and this is what I found. So um, spin is basically, it can't really be explained in in everyday terms. Like you can't really conceptualize what spin is because it's a quantum mechanical um, uh, definition. You can't really associate it with anything that we know of. The best analogy for spin is Consider a planet. So let's say I have planet Earth, right? This planet Earth. And we have the sun. Okay. Now, um, let's say the Earth is rotating around. I mean, revolve, revolving, right? Revolving around the sun. Now, as the Earth is rotating, revolving around the sun, the Earth itself is rotating about its axis. Now, imagine that this, the Earth now, is the electron, while the sun is the nucleus. The act of revolving would be what is known as the um, the L. Remember in the quantum number system we have shell, subshell, orbital and spin. Oh, orbital and spin. The, the the act of revolving around the, the nucleus would be what is known as the subshell or the um, angular momentum. But also there's this other factor the spin. And the spin is basically this act of um, rotating around its axis. Now, an electron doesn't really rotate around its axis because it doesn't really have sides. Um, an electron, you can't really describe an electron in terms of a planet. Like, it doesn't, it's just a point. It doesn't really have any sides to it. So, the, the best way that, that I found to uh, communicate this idea of spin of, of an electron is the mathematical description. The mathematical description is what is known as a spinner. A sp um, it's known as a spinner. So what exactly is a spinner? Um, a spinner is a mathematical concept of an object. For example, um, let's take planet Earth again as an example. Let's say planet Earth has, um, if we cut it into, if, if we divide up into two sections, let's say this section is called site A and this section is called side B. Now let, let's say side A is facing us right now. This is side A. Imagine side A is facing us right now. Um, if we were to rotate it, if planet Earth was what is known as a spinner, if we rotate it once, 360 degrees around, we would get only to B. To get to A, we need to rotate around. So so from A to B, we, get, we need 360 degrees. But to get back to A, we need another 360 degrees. So in effect, um, for a spinner to get back to its original state, you need to rotate it about the axis of 70, 720 degrees. So you need to rotate a spinner twice, two full rotations, in order to get it back to the exact same state. That's what an electron is. An electron is a spinner because, let's say an electron is at state plus one. I'm not sure what plus one means, but let's say it's, it's at state plus one. If you rotate it about its axis one full turn, i.e. 360 degrees, we will get to a state of negative 1. And in order to go back to plus 1, we have to rota rotate it around another full turn. So it takes a an electron two full turns to get back to its original plus 1 state. And that's what a spinner. And that is why an electron has spin of plus 1 half. The, um, you guys were probably wondering, why plus, why half? Why plus half and negative half? Why not, you know, 5 halves? Why not 4? Why not just 0? The reason why an electron spin is plus half is because it, you can't 
there's no reason as to why, but we know that it's past half because it is a spinner. It takes, from experiments, we found out that um, it takes an electron two full turns to get back to its original state. So, in effect, one turn gets it back to half of its original state. That's why it's called a plus half. I think that that's the best way of explaining why electrons have plus half spin. Because um, my chemistry class actually asked me, my chemistry teacher actually just um, asked me, uh, why do electrons have plus half spin? Because nobody knows, right? So I, I spent my, my whole weekend <laughs> um, trying to ex um, look up why electrons, electrons have a plus half spin. And I, f I came to, to the conclusion that um, it's just an intrinsic property of electrons. It's the same as asking the question of where do electrons get that charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs? Like, why that exact number? We only know it's that exact number from experiments, but we have no idea as to why it has to be that number. So from experiments, we know that um, electrons have a plus half and negative half spin. But why? We, don't, we do not know. And an example of an, an experiment, if you guys still don't believe me, well, here's an experiment that was done to conclude that, um, to conclude that electrons have plus half spin. So the experiment that was done is known as the stern Gerlach experiment. Okay. Now what happened was, let's say we have a huge magnet. So with a magnet of a south pole on the top and with a magnet below, the north pole. And let's say the south pole is stronger. So I added like this little section on on, on the bottom to make sure that it's a bit stronger than the than the top. So there's in there's an actual there's um an unbalanced magnetic field here. So if there was an uh, if there was a charged particle going through, it would be deflected um to a certain side. So what Stern and Galak did was they fired silver atoms. And why silver? Because they had they were what what are known as a hydrogenated hydrogenated atom, and because they have a valence shell with only one electron, so they fired the silver atom through. And what um and what they thought was that okay so due to electrons, there must be some sort of um, magnetic um field in this silver atom. So depending on the orientation of the electron spin, the like spin could be facing this way or that way or this way, depending on that spin, the atom will get deflected into a different amount of different um, different areas, right? It could be deflected up here, down here, or down here. Now this was what was expected. But what actually happened was that the was that the atom only was deflected in this area or this area. Nowhere in between. Only these specific areas. And these measurements were recorded at about plus h bar over 2 and negative h bar over 2. That's why um, it was concluded that the atom has a plus half and negative half spin. Because spin is actually in terms, spin is, uh, technically it has a unit of h bar. But we just kind of take that h bar out and that's why uh, we just leave it as plus half. Plus half actually means plus h bar over two, but we just take it, we just take away the units and just write plus half negative half. So hopefully you can, you can understand um, what spin is. Hopefully, because it's not really an idea that is familiar to us. An electron doesn't really spin about its axis. It's it's kind of different. And as to why electrons have a plus half spin, well, experiments have shown that electrons have a plus half spin and why we don't know we only know that it is so through experiments so hopefully you guys enjoy this quick little um, explanation on what spin is and why electrons have a plus half and negative half spin so on that I'll see you guys next time peace out